welcome to another session of our lecture videos on vector um, fields in the previous video we looked at differential calculus of vectors we came across the gradient or the grad of a vector the divergence of a vector and the curl of a vector we made an establishment that the grad of a vector would be a vector the divergence of a vector would be a scalar and the curl of a vector will also give us a vector. We will need this in the next um, thing we are looking at. That is the vector integral calculus, from differential to integral calculus. Now in this integral calculus, we have two forms, as we've already looked at. We can integrate the vector over a curve. We can integrate over a curve called C, or we can integrate over a surface S. So we did a surface integral and the line integral. So if I'm integrating over a curve, I know it is called the line integral. If I'm integrating over a surface, I'm looking at the surface integral. Okay. Now you know that this C is a curve and the S is a surface. It is defined by, I write this as equation one. I can define the line integral by equation one, where C is a curve. The R is a parametric curve. I can define my surface integral using equation two. We made some establishment that my function can be a scalar, it can be a vector, which is in this angle bracket. It can also take the differential form as the representation there. In either of these cases, my change in R, that is the parametric curve, takes the norm when it is a scalar. It takes the derivative as it is dotting when it's a vector. And when it's a differential form, then you have to find the various derivatives you have. Now when we move to the surface integral, we define our normal vector as a the norm of the cross product. And we did some establishment on that. All right. So with all these representations, we come to the important thing that is the vector theorems. Vector theorems. So in this session, I'll take you through, um, let me say, a, a cheat forms of how to get this theorems right. Let me start with the line integral. If my C, that is the curve, I can define it as a closed curve, it is simple curve, and this positive oriented. Positive oriented means it's moving the clockwise direction. Simple means there's no cross or intersection. Closed means the two ends are there. When you have an open curve, is this where there are two endpoints for an open curve. If it's not simple, it means that there's some kind of intersection in the curve. Positive orientation means you're moving in the clockwise form. So the other part of it is that if it is not open, then it gets closed. It means there's no endpoint. Simple means there's no cross. And the negative direction means you're moving anti-clockwise. These are the differences to the curve. When these three things are satisfied, we can, under the line integral, we have these theorems we can consider. The Green's theorem, and then the Stokes theorem. So the question is, when do I use the Green's theorem and when do I use the Stokes theorem? The Green's theorem converts the line integral to a double integral. The Stokes theorem converts the same line integral to a still a double integral. This double integral is a surface integral. So that is the relationship. 
Green's term converts line to double integrals. Stokes' term converts the line integral to some surface integrals. So the representation here is this. If I have the differential form of the line integral, so I have over a curve, the first part dx plus the second part dy, I can convert this or solve this using the double integral as the second derivative with respect to x, the first term with respect to y dA. So over some plane R. For the line for the Stokes theorem, that use the vector approach. So I've catered for the differential form using the Green's theorem. If I'm in the vector form, I can use the Stokes theorem. So I can convert. Let me bring the line here. I can convert a simple line integral into a surface integral by using the curl, the curl of f. So I have it as some dA. Now Stokes theorem talks about circulation. Circulation means rotation. Rotation implies a curl. So that is why I said that we would need this theorems the circulation divergence means either you're moving towards a point or away from a point to understand these theorems okay now what happens to the surface integral part so under the surface integral it can only be grouped as the divergence theorem So divergence to you hear the word flux. Flux is the movement in and out of a medium. So what does the divergence theorem do? It converts the surface integral, don't forget we're on the surface integral, to a triple integral. It means that in place of using the double S, F, some normal D, S, I can make it one, two, three by using the dive of the F. Flux means divergence, so that is why I'm using dive. Circulation means rotation, so I use what? Curl. Grad green means you're looking at the change, that's why I'm using the gradient here, so the small change. I know how complicated this may seem, but as a flow. So from line integral, I can move to any of these two. Let me change the thing. From line integral, I can use the Green's theorem or the Stokes theorem. I can use the Green's theorem if I'm moving from the line integral to a dog. So they all use a double integral, but one is the small change Stokes is the curl. So it means that from over here you're using double integral. And under the surface integral, so I'm continuing from here, I use what we call the divergence theorem. Divergence deal with flux. And so I use dive of f. And that one is mostly you move into a triple integral. So someone will say, why do I want to move into this? It's sometimes easier to solve the problems in the double integrals and the triple integrals you've done already. So when do I move into either Green's or Stokes? You know double integrals is mostly aside rectangular surfaces. I can look at a general region. This general region can be a triangle and all other things. I can also have a circle. When I look at circle, I'm moving into the polar coordinate. And so it's easier to use the double integral. 
now when i'm in the triple integral side the rectangular cube i can also have some general regions So these general regions can be a cylindrical surface, a spherical surface, or a cube. That's a rectangular cube. If you see any of these surfaces and you're finding the work done or the surface integral, it will be prudent to use the triple die. That is what this theory means. In the same way, if you see any of these surfaces, and you are finding the work done along these curves, it will be prudent to use the double integral. That is either the, di the Green's theorem or the Stokes, which uses the curl, and then the small change. This is a simple um, cheat understanding of these theorems. Let me just do something little here. You know, under triple integrals, I can have um, so then it could be something like a cylinder. It has a tube and it has two openings. And if I'm looking at spherical, spherical, I can look at a ball. A ball is a sphere. A cube, you know what that means. It's like drawing a box. I hope this is, yeah, this is what I have. So when I'm finding the surface integrals of these of these um, objects or geometry then you don't have to waste energy solving using the surface integral you can move to the divergence theorem by the dive of the vector field so please take your time and understand the movement from the line integral to greens or stokes and then from surface to divergence. In the next session, I will take examples on each of these theorems.